Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Let's Play Stormblood, where we have entered Bardem's Metal. And honestly, I don't think I've gotten this dungeon at night before. I think I've coincidentally always only seen it during the day. So this would be some nice new perspective. So I do like how this place is all very nice and open and not some, you know, darkened cellar, things like that. You know, it's it's just an open plane just like the rest of the place and I really enjoy it for that reason. Uh, the dungeon as a whole, mm, there's only really one thing in particular that I think is a totally sweet and awesome thing. Um, otherwise, it's pretty par for the course as dungeons go. I just more really appreciate how just 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 so open it is, and especially in this environment where you, where you can see off into the distance. Not that there's actually much to be found, like there's no real Easter eggs or anything you can spot there. But I I just just totally appreciate that because most of the time, you know, we see dungeons. You know, they're in like underground cellars or old abandoned palaces or houses or you know things like that where you know you have long windy corridors and you can't see around the corners and everything like that here you absolutely can and it's, it's just totally just a nice change of perspective like there's what I assume to be some kind of ceremonialist decorations around other place like they, they look like laundry lines, which is kind of funny. Um, and I sort of wish we knew what, the, what they meant. Keep switching to the wrong hopper here. Um, like, are they scraps of uh, basically b trophy bits from those who have conquered Bardem's before or something maybe or they a testament to Bardem's past since antiquity or, or anything like that I'm just kind of curious I mean they make they make for perfectly fine decorations but I can't help but wonder considering this is a sacred sacred ground if it is supposed to mean something and what that, that little detail is not really that important to the narrative as a whole. It's just more something to, to sate my curiosity. And I am glad that such a thing is here. You know, it's it's not just this, this big open field where, you know, they claim it's, you know, sacred ground and stuff like that. You actually see, e even if it's just what looks like torn t-shirts on a clothesline, you, you do see what looks to be evidence that, you know, this is indeed a sacred place to them. And, and in, in a different way than, you know, what you would call quote-unquote Western traditional religious symbols and such, if that makes any sense. I know I'm kind of just babbling on here, but... Um... Okay, did that glowy rock just speak to me? Now, how these killer rock things, which we saw outside the place, are sentient? Question mark. Um, I don't know. And they honestly remind me of Olmec from Legends of the Hidden Temple. So. There's that. I mean, I mean, just look at the ex expression, okay? Like, 90s Nickelodeon kids, you know what I'm talking about, right? You totally know what I'm talking about. I just hope there's no Shrine of the Silver Monkey in here. Okay, and conveniently falls over for us to blitz pass. Okay. Um, totally walking on your face, and I don't know how that thing was enchanted, but apparently it thinks I'm worthy and will let me pass. Cool. Okay, thanks. <sighs> I 
Gotta love local wildlife trying to kill us all. But I guess that's par for the course here. Hey, there's another one of these things just sitting here. Okay. Uh, okay, another wall talking to me and looks like a very angry wall. Okay, uh, you're pretty big. I actually take back what I said earlier. Um, I almost forgot about this part. There's actually two bosses in here I completely appreciate because... Yeah, there's wildlife in here. Just sitting here chilling. Something you don't usually see. Like, usually the wildlife is, you know, explicitly out to kill you. And here they're just kind of happily just sitting here. Although being attacked has kind of angered them a little bit. And they start startled and ran off. And it's that kind of little touches that that really make me appreciate some of the, some of the things. Um, Going back to what I've what I've said in the past, where you know the game is is sorely lacking in a lot of parts on little interactions like this, and you don't need you know heavy dialogue and things like that to to often get the point across. You can often do some of these things without wasting any sort of time, but you give so much more life and personality to either a character or an environment just by little touches like this. And while there are a bunch of them throughout, all throughout Stormblood and, and such, which I do appreciate, I really wish there was more. And even though this is just a dungeon boss, I'm really glad, you know, for such a simple thing, they actually did take the time to incorporate such a thing into the game. It's, it's one of those little touches that just, you know, it just imparts the amount of love and, and dedication that I know the dev team does put into this game. I know I, you know, fire shots at them all the time and I nitpick about a lot of stuff. But it's just little things like this that just, this just totally just make me much more, inver you know, immersed in the, the environment and, you know, keep all the dungeons. Please don't stack that on me. Oh my goodness. You know, keep them from getting too too stale like every dungeon is just like okay trash pull trash pull trash pull boss trash pull trash pull trash pull and here we have just something just a little bit different it's not even it's not even a lot but it just makes such a difference to make the place you know way less of a bore and it's kind of why i enjoy this dungeon even if everything does hit like a freaking truck Today we level by defeating a boss and not by crossing a bridge. Okay then. Works for me, I guess. Here's we leap to our doom. It's a good thing we landed on that rock and not in the roaring river below. That would be kind of crappy. You know, I just got new boots as part of a quest item too. 
Like, I literally just glamoured it, like, five minutes before we started. Ugh. So, um... Okay, rock-like... man here. Rock-biter kind of thing. Yeah, I hit the wrong button on the wrong hotbar. I know there's no aether currents in here. Not what I totally meant to hit, but... You hefty arm, please don't not do not come down and crush me all over again. I will take that too. I'll have to wait to put those on though. So, another guy with the hammery hands of Smashy Smash. Yay! Let me put that on. Ah, dang it! <laughs> so, yeah, this is a rather creative boss because this little trial is entirely mechanics based. You don't do any attacking whatsoever in here. At all. It's just to play a game of properly dodge the mechanics. Respect the nature, respect the step, something along those lines. And I've never actually wiped on this fight before, but... I know you can, and... I'm not sure the trigger, because every- there- there's several little phases here, and, you know, if you get hit by mechanics, you know, you pretty much get stunned and you have to just take everything else to the face. And I don't know what the condition is for the... the auto-fail. If I ever hit it, it was right when this, the, uh, the expansion came out, so it's long since been erased from my memory. Well, I really wish we had more bosses like this, or at least with a similar idea, like with, with a phase where... It's all about not doing, you know, LOL, you know, big DPS, but that you need to actually pay attention to the environment that is around you and react accordingly, and you can't just tunnel vision. And honestly, it is rather amusing to see people fail repeatedly on mechanics. Although it's pretty obvious by the levels, we have people, other people in here who've not done this dungeon before, so... I can forgive. Um, the patterns are, are always, always the same. And if you know what's coming, they're relatively easy to, to avoid. I always just try to cheese that one, and sometimes I make it and sometimes I don't. But since it's only one mechanic, I don't get fettered by it, so... And, of course, they have to play the, you know, original Final Fantasy victory tune at the end of that. It's a nice little cheesy touch. Alright, let me put on my choker. Okay. Oh god, now I do pummel into my doom into the raging river. Oh man, this is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt. No way we survive in this! Death is coming! Okay, I guess we're fine.
Whee! Oh, come on. You guys always know how I know I have to do that. So now we're in... I don't want to say caves because... Well, you can still see the sunlight outside. Well, underneath the clouds, that is, but... I kind of like the, the, the... The temple yet outdoors kind of feel to this place. So it's something I, again, one, one of the, the, the small details I can really appreciate about, you know, the amount of thought and design that went into this place. And you can't really see it that well from this angle because battle effects and stuff like that. Yeah, but um, those gates are burbs. Presumably, like the ones we are about to tame by completing this place. And yeah, our cousins, the killer butterflies, are, are back. Tell you, if I saw one of these in real life, that would terrify me. Oh, oh god, now it just went all Indiana Jones on us. Okay, okay, I'm scared now. I'm scared. Those things are huge. So, how many people have those things crushed? On the trials? Probably too many to count. Let's not dwell on that. I tell you, I've seen some pretty... There's there's one species of moth, and I don't know what it is off the top of my head. If I, if I remember, I may... Link it in the description because I know how basically how to find it. There, there's this one species of moth that is freaking massive, or at least in, in comparison to most moths that a common person would see. And this is like a decade ago, and he was outside, or maybe she. Well, let's pretend it's a he for now. Uh, outside near my trash barrels at work and I had to empty the trash barrels and you know take them take them to the dumpster and, and whatnot and he was spotted at like four o'clock in the morning by by someone right near the door and later on like three hours later when I go to take the trash out I nearly stepped on them in front of the dumpster and that very much scared the crap out of me because number one I don't like the idea of killing other living things even if they are quote unquote considered pests I won't even kill an ant like or a spider like I will rehome them but nothing more and plus I just don't like guts on my on my shoe and it's a needless waste of life but anyway um seeing the size of the thing and that hit that the body segment was like as fat as my thumb kind of freaked me out quite a bit and I'm like, oh god, I'm like, oh god, I'm like, just just throw the trash in the dumpster, like, it's just a moth, it's not gonna hurt you, but oh my god, was it just absolutely just frightening to look at. Now there was another time where a, uh, a moth that was colored much like these butterflies were got into my back room and scared the crap out of me one day because it just startled me for you know, something flying past you in a place that you're not supposed to see things flying past your head. And would later fly past me and smack me in the back of the head. And not that it hurt or anything, but you know, you, you just feel like the flick of it, you know, crashing into you. And yeah, that, that freaked me out quite a bit too. I've always had kind of a fear of, of creepy crawlies, and giant creepy crawlies don't help. If, if, if it's behind, you know, like a pane of glass or whatever, like, I can deal, because it's not going to, you know, bother me. So, you know, in, inside a museum or a zoo, you know, seeing, you know, the giant millipedes or, you know, the, the, the hissing cockroaches. Those are behind glass, so those don't really bother me nearly as much. Like, I won't, like, sit there and stare at them, but... Like, I know I'm safe from them, you know, crawling all over me and showing up around the corner unawares. I think that's what freaks me out. It's just, it's just the unknown factor of where they're gonna show up and the thought of them 
just crawling in or near you, that that that's what gets me. Not that they, not that they exist. Creep, creepy crawly things are allowed to exist, and, and they're cool. And some of them, like spiders, for instance, um, a lot of species of spiders are actually very helpful. So. Ooh, we got glow-in-the-dark paintings on the wall. I likey. Also, ha ha ha, angry burb. Okay, enough of that joke. So um, you can't really see it well from this angle, and I'm not going to go out of my way, but you can see the, the wall scribbles with the buffalo. Um, they have a different name in this universe, of course, but we're just going to call them buffalo. That, that's what they're similar to. Yeah, the paintings go further down. Again, gives, imparts more of the feeling that this place is, is a sacred place to the Zalea. And it's one of, it's one of those small details that, uh, that I, I very much enjoy seeing. So yeah, this bird does not screw around at all. It's one of the more heavy hitting bosses in the game. And it's kind of annoying as a result of it. And like this this bird is 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 very, very upset at us. I mean maybe it's all just part of the test. Yeah, I'm, tr I'm trying to help you, but if I get interrupted, I can't do much. Oh god, and they even have eagles to clean up the corpses. Oh, jeez. So is there a specific bird of prey that the Yol is supposed to be based off of? Someone someone in the comments kindly educate me if, if that is indeed the case or if it's more an original design or even if it's from, and from any kind of legend or something like that. I'm actually curious to know. I'm not really up to snuff on my birds of prey as it were. Like I see, like around here, I see the occasional bald eagle. Uh, mostly, mostly the birds of prey around here, around where I live, are red-tailed hawks. Although I have seen once a peregrine falcon. Well, I'm not. I'm not really familiar as much with things like. Uh, other species of eagle besides like a bald eagle or a uh, golden eagle or um, things like various species of vulture or osprey. Not nearly as familiar with them or their potential diversity. Or again, like even stuff that's, you know, not from the Americas. I'm kind of dumb. Like I feel like every week I learn about some new type of species of animal that I never knew existed before. Nature is wonderful, for the most part. Except when it's trying to explicitly kill me. So yeah, this part can be a pain in the butt if you don't know what you're doing because, yeah, you can just very easily get yourself wrecked here. I don't even have thin air to back me up. Goody.
Well, I hope that was worth all the trouble. And apparently it decided we won because it just flew off. He's like, I've had enough of you. I feel like I just replaced half this equipment and... Okay, that I don't need, so that can go over here. Alright, so let's equip some of our new stuff before... Yeah, now you can see I'm, I'm dressed up similar like a person here, but you know what? We're, we're gonna change that because we are all about the glamours in this universe, okay? Alright, okay. Where is... Gotta glamour everything. Yeah, I know. I need to clean up my inventory. Okay, now we look like ourselves again. Wait a minute, this is where I came out in the first place. How did I get out? How do you know I just didn't walk in 20 feet and then come all the way back out? Like, I would expect this to be like the backyard, not the front yard, you know? See, the boys are straggling behind, though. So are there separate paths in there or something, maybe? Or do we just all decide to go in five minutes apart or something? I don't know. Where are you? There you are. You've been holding on to all four of them this whole time. You're silly, Lise. Hopefully he didn't blow into all of them. That's the same as my chocobo call. You're silly game. You're pointing forward, least not up. How do you tell them apart? Hooray! Let's get ourselves a fancy new coal for our tank. I almost forgot what job that even was for a second. I'm like, uh, what? Alright, so... Yeah, now we have brand new bird mount. Cool. We're not gonna be riding that thing, but... Because it's huge and... Actually, let's let's just put it on just before we we end the episode. I'm not really fond of this mount. Um, it's just way too big and, and wieldy, and I don't know if any birds in real life look like this, but I I feel like the feather extrusions and the swirl is kind of over designed. Again, I'm not I'm not really privy to to IRL birds of prey species, but I don't know. It just feels kind of gaudy to look at. But that's just my my personal opinion. The idea of riding around on a giant bird of prey is awesome. I just not fond of the way it looks. But that's gonna have to be it for this episode. And hopefully next time we'll find. Hien and Gosetsu have made it out okay because it would really suck for Hien if he doesn't make it through this trial. 
Like, I'd be happy to fight on his behalf, but I think he would be disappointed that he wouldn't be able to participate himself. So we'll just have to wait till next time. So thank you for watching, guys, and I shall see you later.